Welcome back to Wealth on Health, traveling for a cure. People all over the world have been impacted by the cutting edge science going into adult stem cell therapy. We had the pleasure of speaking to a handful of these heart patients, including David Fagey. One of his cardiologists had advised him to make arrangements with a hospice because the end was near. Let's hear David's story. I had a long history of various illnesses, which started with kidney failure. I'm one of the longest living kidney transplant recipients in the world. At 25 years right now, I have my kidney. But the kidney issues or sends out a hormone called renin and it controls your blood pressure. My blood pressure went skyrocket for a long period of time, which exploded my heart, which emulated or resulted in uh, uh, heart failure. So the, my primary issue was um, end-stage heart failure. In my case, it took about 20 years to develop into full heart failure. And at its terminal point, um, I was told to go to hospice. And I was going to go directly from the hospital here in, in Naples to a hospice here in Naples. And I was told I would be given adequate amount of morphine to make the transition a very smooth transition. I'm not keen for smooth transitions, by the way. Like many of the patients treated in Bangkok, he found this stem cell therapy using the internet. I had made several inquiries uh, to get stem cell um, procedures done, and I had my first procedure done, attempted to be done in Brazil, and unfortunately in that, in that particular setting, uh, they gave me too much blood thinner and it resulted in a bleeding aneurysm to the, to the brain, which is a stroke, and I had a massive stroke. Uh, so I never got the stem cell procedure at that time, but about eight months later I got a procedure in Bangkok and did fabulously well. Thrilled. David received his first treatment in March of 2006 and went back just under a year later for a second treatment. These procedures wrought a significant change in his health. I would say that breathing was probably a tough one. <laughs> um, getting up and walking as little as from the bed to the bathroom was a huge chore and anything else was out of the question. Now David is able to move freely without depending on his wheelchair or walker and besides the obvious physical benefits his heart tests also show great improvement. You measure the output of your heart by what's called an ejection fraction. Call it horsepower but my horse if the normal horsepower for our discussion purposes is 50 to 65 I started at between 12 and 20, and those are in the death range, and I'm now 50. I'm absolutely at the bottom of normal heart function. That is unbelievable. It's better than a heart transplant. Mel Forbes was another terminal patient who was given six to nine months to say his goodbyes. He had looked at several options, including a study in Canada, but was denied due to his diabetes. But thanks to the technology of the information age, Mel found hope in TheraVitae. Well, on uh, December 28th of 2000, my bride and I just came in home from dinner, and a half an hour later I had a major heart attack. And they took me to the emergency room, and <laughs> that's all I remember for 43 days. They they it took them eight hours of the operation because I had a mitral valve and five arteries go at the same time. So my lungs were full of blood, nothing was working. My son Craig was watching the Health Discovery Channel at night and they did like a one minute blip on this stem cell procedure in Bangkok. So right away he called me and the next morning I went on the internet and got some basic information and phone numbers and I called Dr. Kittipan, Aaron Kittipan. He explained the situation to me. So my son Richard and I left for Bangkok. On the 23rd, they did the operation. I never remember, never forget the 22nd. We were sitting outside about 8 o'clock in the evening, and Dr. Kittipat come out, and he, he, his driver was waiting for him to drive him home. And I never forget the last thing he said was, <coughs> he says, you better take some time and talk to that gentleman upstairs because you're going to need it. 
And that early that day, they said I only had about a 30% chance of surviving the operation. And then my son says, let's go home. And I said, no. I said, I'm going home one way, or one of two ways, in a box or I'm going home on that airplane. Now, when I went to Bangkok, my ejection fraction was between 17 and 19, which is how much your heart is putting out blood and everything. And my injection fraction six weeks ago was 40 plus. Now this is amazing in itself. Up next, more courageous profiles of terminally ill patients and their fight to live. Stay right here for more Wealth on Health. Traveling.